If any of you guys need a legit website for your tech YouTube channel, blog, or whatever, the .tech squad is offering $5 .tech domains until April 8th with the code AWESOMESAUCE. This is a new initiative, so many domain names haven't been taken yet. That's why I was able to score AWESOMESAUCE.TECH before any of you guys could snag it first and try selling it to me later. Trolls. Go check it out, I put a link in the description. Okay, bye. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am taking a look at Virtual Desktop 1.0. And this is a really cool app. Uh, in my opinion, it's a must have if you own either an HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift, it's compatible with both. Um, just simply because it really expands the functionality and what you can do to interface with your desktop when using a VR headset. And um, of course you can already go into your desktop in a virtual world uh, using Steam VR. So Steam VR has a free desktop mode, but it's severely limited in what it can do. Um, pretty much you're limited to uh, a flat screen that's really too close to your face. It's almost like being at a movie theater and sitting in the front row, and there's really not much else you can do outside of that realm for now. So um, I'm going to be going over some of the basics on what you can do in this amazing application. It's only 15 bucks on Steam. At first I was like, eh, it's kind of pricey, and after I actually pulled the trigger and started playing around with it, realized it's completely worth every penny. So uh, let's go ahead and just give you guys a brief rundown on what you can do. So right now you're seeing what I'm seeing in the virtual desktop application. You can see right off the bat my screen is curved, something that uh, Steam VR cannot do natively. Um, and I'm also in space. Space is pretty cool. This is kind of trippy actually. And this is one of the free backgrounds that you can uh, switch between in the application. So you've also got deep space. It looks like we're kind of sitting in front of Saturn or some other ringed planet at the moment. We've also got purple nebula. And then there's also star field. There's, there's a bunch of little stars floating around us. It's the keeping us company and stuff. A couple other free environments that you get here are the photo studio, which uh, I guess they're taking pictures of these robots over here. It's, it's pretty cool. And then you've also got sunrise. Um, this is probably what my, my wife would switch to because it's the least scary. She's, she's scared of space. Um, but uh, there's also a couple more that you can buy in the environment store um, that's, uh, that's in Steam, and you can purchase those for anywhere from a dollar to three dollars. Uh, this is the Cerebrus, the Cerebral Theater, Cerebral Theater, uh, pretty much where Professor Xavier goes to, uh, you know, read minds and shit. Um, so this is really cool. You can see right now the, sc the screen is curved and tilted kind of above me. So this would be great for like leaning back in your chair, you know, reclining in your chair and watching movies and things like that. Some, some environments you cannot scale though. The developer has uh, locked it. So it's pretty much what you see is what you get. Um, but I think it's a pretty good distance at least uh, for me, for my taste. And you've also got uh, Cinema Screen, which is another one. I think this was a $2 environment and it's, it's looking a little lonely in here but it's a really cool feeling it really feels like you're at the movie theater um, again the, the screen is kind of tilted upward uh, it's flat this time you cannot curve it it's just uh, just like a movie screen would be and um, yeah it's a it's, it's a really cool really cool feature home theater I think is one that comes with virtual desktop 1.0 I think this just comes stock this is a freebie uh, it looks looks like you're in more of a home theater and it's also pretty cool the screen is quite a bit smaller uh, than the cinema screen, but uh, still pretty sweet. And then we've got Rick's Garage. This is probably my favorite. And I don't know why I'm not sitting in front of my desk right now, but uh, usually I'm sitting in front of my monitor. Um, but uh, yeah, you can see this is just a more traditional um, curved screen. It looks like an Acer Predator is on my desk. And really cool artwork all around. It's just a uh, gives you a nice little atmosphere to work in if you so choose. Now I will say though, when you're when I'm looking at this particular virtual screen and it's this close and it's and it's about this size um, it's a little bit difficult to see smaller text or icons simply because uh, you're shrinking the native resolution so small that uh, it looks kind of shimmery and it's it's hard to pick out little details so I wouldn't recommend working in this type of environment as cool as it is watching movies and stuff is fine um, but not doing any actual productive work I'd probably advise, advise against that let me give you guys a quick little demo on watching a movie in the cerebral theater. It's it's pretty badass. So I'm gonna, gonna fire up some Kung Fury here. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But we're gonna put these on. Oh yeah, it's coming through. Ah. There we go.
All right, so having all these different backgrounds and whatnot is pretty cool. Um, however, I think more importantly is the ability to scale the monitor. Well, again, I can't do it in this environment. We'll go back to Dark Nebula here. So the ability to kind of just bring the monitor either as close to you as you want or far the hell away um, is an invaluable feature and probably the most important tool in this application. But here you go, you've also got screen distance, which kind of... Uh, pulls the screen apart, it kind of gives you the illusion of either having this massive screen or a smaller screen that's really close to you. So right now, at the very lowest, it feels like it's like maybe a 30 inch screen in front of my face. And as soon as I crank it all the way up, the screen physically hasn't gotten much bigger. It's just, it's um, oriented in such a way where it feels now like a 20 foot screen. It's, it's kind of hard to explain. You just had to be there, guys. You just had to be there. As for screen options, you do have the option to curve the screen as it is now, or you can make it completely flat. And then in that case, you're probably going to want to push the screen a little bit further away from you. Um, I actually prefer the curved. I really do, just because it's, uh, it's, it feels more natural in a, in a VR space, uh, where everything is kind of curved around you and spherical. Um, it looks kind of awkward when it's just a, a flat screen, so... I uh, do prefer the curved. It's really great that you have that feature here. There's also multi-monitor support, so if you have a second physical monitor connected to your system, you can actually display that in the VR environment, and it'll just appear right to the, you know, just adjacent to your primary display, and you can orient them. You can, you know, have your primary display straight in front of you, and then your, your, your second monitor to the right of you, or you can kind of uh, reposition it so that uh, you're looking straight in between both your monitors. Uh, and there's also this reset orientation option here. So based, based on where you're looking, you can click that button and your your whole virtual monitor will actually um, reset to the position you're facing. So that's kind of cool. If you want to like be computing while you're laying down in bed, you can just do that. And now all of a sudden, or if you want to watch a movie in bed while, while looking straight up at the ceiling, you can just uh, do that. Click reset orientation and it'll be right there. So floating uh, essentially just tilts your screen upwards a little bit, kind of like how we saw in the Cerebral Theater, where it just kind of tilted your screen upwards. Uh, it's just a really quick way to do that. If you want to, uh, again, recline in your chair while, while using your, your system. There's also clear wallpaper, and, uh, and if you make it transparent, you can see straight through your desktop into the, the virtual environment behind, which is a pretty cool feeling. Of course, all your, your desktop icons are still there. Um, you can also just have a regular black background for your desktop as well. All right, we've also got some audio options here, including voice command support. So uh, you can essentially tell the application to do any of these basic commands. So um, switching to different tabs, you can reset the orientation, uh, showing uh, or launching games straight from the application, returning to desktop from your game, or asking what time it is. So what time is it? What time is it? Current time is 9.41 a.m. You're damn right, it's 9.41 a.m. Switch to bindings. Reset orientation. Awesome stuff. Uh, okay, so you got voice commands there. You can change the accuracy level of it. Say, use a lower value if it doesn't recognize what you're saying. Use a higher value if it picks up commands incorrectly. So uh, based on how well it's re receiving your commands, you can adjust that and maybe get some better feedback. There's also vocal feedback, which is kind of like Windows Narrator. Environment sounds, let's go ahead and check that on. Now we've got some environment sounds for our various environments. So uh, it starts with an intro chime anytime you st start a new, start up a new environment. Gives you kind of an introductory, some of them give you an introductory audio audio cue. But uh, then you've just got some ambient noise. I, I don't know how well you can hear it, but it just kind of sounds like we're in this big scary metal ball because we are pretty cool i would turn that off if you uh you know want to watch movies and stuff so it doesn't interfere you've also got these let me switch back to uh one of these space ones also got side by side options so um an example of this would be uh side by side content so you know if you ever watch a youtube video and it's you know, it's got that split it's like meant to be 3d and it's actually got uh two images one for your left eye one for your right eye they, they look pretty similar like they're almost duplicates but they're not and then uh, it's only when you actually have a program or application to put them together do you see this like 360 or this kind of 3D image. So let me go ahead and try to find that right now. All right, so we've got this side-by-side uh, -side video from Sony. It's just a bunch of robots in space. We'll go ahead and check the on-screen. And then we'll full screen the video and see what we see. 
All right, so um, to me, it just looks like one single image. There's no splitting of, of the, uh, the two images. And I can see these robot guys flying in here. And it does look very 3D. Um, kind of a cool thing that you could do. We are still in space as well. So yeah, and if you could, uh, if you saw from the actual YouTube video, it's um, it's a side by side image, so it's actually split. So you can see it's two separate images. Doesn't look anything like what I was viewing when that side by side option was enabled. So pretty cool stuff. Um, there's also other options depending on if you're using a headset. Blah blah blah. I'm not going to go too into detail with that. Uh, Windows integration, so you can mirror the headset, mirror what the headset is viewing to a window. This is exactly what I have up right here. I just have this open so I can capture it with XSplit. Uh, you can also do that, um, mirror it to a generic picture-in-picture -picture monitor. Uh, you've also got Force Open VR, which forces the use of Open VR when you're using a Rift, for example. Uh, you can show error notifications, start the program when Windows starts up. Also, Open VR options, so you can show Chaperone. Chaperone is the uh, the blue grid or the uh, the grid lines that pop up anytime you're near or approaching your boundaries that you've set uh, for your room scaling. And you've also got Return to Desk return to desktop. Moving on to bindings, you've got some hotkey options here that you can customize to do various simple tasks like reducing uh, the screen size, resetting the orientation, um, things like that. So pretty cool stuff, just helps you navigate a little bit easier. You also have the option to launch games through Virtual Desktop 1.0. Uh, however, I wasn't able to do so successfully. I tried Rocket League, GTA 5, and Counter-Strike, and each one gave me a problem. Rocket Strike just straight up wouldn't launch, it just said failed for some reason. Um, Counter-Strike gave me an alert that I was not launching the game straight from Steam, so it flagged it as, you know, potential cheating or whatever, so I, I wasn't able to, to actually play the game through this application. And then GTA 5, not necessarily Virtual Desktop's fault, but for some reason I couldn't log into Rockstar Social. It was just giving me grief, so I just said, screw it, I, I don't know if this really works or how well it works. I tried three different games, failed every time. Um, however, once this gets patched up, or maybe in des Virtual Desktop 2.0, I could see this being really useful instead of having to always go back into Steam to launch your games. 360 video, or I'm sorry, 360 photo allows you to drag and drop 360 or panoramic photos into your Virtual Desktop library, and then from there you can just view them with your VR headset. So this is actually my wedding. Uh, this is my wedding reception uh, back in August of 2015, and this is before everyone came and crashed the place, but uh, you can kind of see a little bit of how it looked. There was the uh, the reception, or like the ceremony area, with all the chairs and stuff. We had the reception and ceremony kind of in the same spot, um, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. My friend Ian actually took this picture uh, on that day, and I asked him to send it to me, um, so it's pretty cool. Obviously, there's some, some distortion at the top and bottom of the picture, but uh, it's, it's, it's uh, pretty cool just being able to relive certain moments. This is, um, let me get a better one here. This was our Hawaii trip maybe a year or two ago. We did some ATV riding. This is actually the same island where they they shot a lot of uh, Jurassic Park, uh, the original Jurassic Park, not, not Jurassic World. Um, but uh, again, really, really cool stuff. Hi, I'm leaving. Okay, bye honey. It's, really it's weird to kiss you and, and not and not see you with my eyes open. I know, it is weird. You look like a cloud. All right, now let's check out some 360 video playback. Um, you have the option of pasting a URL, like uh, straight from YouTube. So if you go on YouTube, search for a 360 video, you can just straight up paste it in, really simple. It'll automatically download and start playing uh, in, in the player here. I've already got a couple of them open. So there's this uh, roller coaster from Six Flags Magic Mountain, which I would not advise anyone watching. I'm not going to put that... Put you guys through that right now and then we've got this really cool one from discovery vr and mythbusters on a shark shipwreck uh, which is really cool um obviously like it's it's shot in 4k and it's you can watch it in 4k on youtube however it, it does lose some quality in the vr environment i'm not going to say it's super crisp or anything so, but it is reality, still very cool reality, reality. this is adam and no however nice adam. you turn around you won't see me because i'm not here I'm just doing the narration. Behind that diver who happens to be our executive producer, checking the place out prior to our experiments. You can see that somewhat predictably, the wreck is guarded by a bunch of sharks. So, um, very cool stuff. I really, really do like the 360 features in Virtual Desktop. I think they work really well. Uh, assuming that you have good content, good high quality uh, footage to, to feed it. And I think that's pretty much 
all I wanted to say about this particular application. Obviously, highly recommended to any user with a VR headset um, just to expand the functionality of your desktop and, and your VR headset. Uh, again, not so great for product productivity purposes. However, any kind of content or media playback, I think would be outstanding to, to use this in. It's just a really cool way to watch movies, to experience TV shows on a 20 20 foot screen and things like that uh it really is quite cool and just being able to adjust you know your, your virtual monitor properties is is pretty key also uh if i do have a critique or two for this application it would be to have some support for uh the vive controller um, mouse and keyboard functionality is really good it, the tracking super good something that's not so hot in steam vr's desktop mode uh, the mouse cursor is always like flickering in and out and it's hard to track with it. Um, so that's good. But when you're leaning back watching movies, you're kind of put, putting yourself further away from your mouse. So it would be nice to also have the support for the HTC Vive controller where you could just kind of pick it up almost like a remote controller and point it around and, you know, click on, you know, larger icons and things. As long as you're not trying to like, you know, check mark those boxes in XSplit or something super tiny, uh, the, the Vive controller should work fine for that. So it would, it would have been nice to see some support for that maybe in the future. Also the Xbox Xbox 360 controller, maybe put some multimedia functionality in some of those keys, in some of those buttons for that controller, especially when you're watching content uh, like YouTube videos, uh, just makes it for overall easier viewing. So uh, just some critiques there, but overall, great job to the guy who made this. Uh, again, highly recommend, and hopefully you guys enjoyed getting a gist of what it's all about. So if you did and you enjoyed it, go ahead and toss me a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for more tech videos coming in the near future, and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.